Boyda and welcome to Expansive. I am Ya Tomlu, and this is Seasons After Fall, a beautiful independent platformer that's just released. Uh, it's been actually published by Focus Home Interactive, and it's made by a small French development studio called Swing Swing Submarine. And you can hear the game's wonderful soundtrack now. And this is just such a, a lovely looking game. I mean, the art style is very refreshing. It's very reminiscent of several other titles. But at the same time, it's got its own unique feel to it. And I think that that's the wonderful thing about it. It has its own narrative direction, its own musical style, its own finesse. And that really sets it apart from everything else. And it's certainly not quite as compelling as Ori in the Blind Forest. I don't think the puzzles are quite as tough and I don't think it's quite as, you know, I don't think it didn't get its tender hooks into me quite as much as that. Having said all of that, I think that this is a game that stands on its own merits. It shouldn't really be compared as it's very refreshing and it does some unique things in gameplay stances, which I think are actually really just an interesting element to the game and just kind of changes things up in like, refreshing genuine ways where you're not doing the same or kind of action for instance there is absolutely no combat in seasons after fall essentially you're just running and jumping and gliding around and interacting and solving puzzles and just basically trying to preserve this rainforest and i really like that refreshing change of pace all the action comes from literally just platforming and and puzzle solving no sort of clawing and scratching and roaring you know that that is a really nice touch and i think that that really sets the game apart in many many ways so what I'm doing here, I'm guiding this orb towards the fox, not too closely as I'll frighten him. And I'm using my interactive beam again to get the fox and draw him into the water. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to pull him towards the center here, very slowly. A bit faster. Pick up the pace. 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 <laughs> so there we go. Fox isn't that slow. Oh, there we go. So the fox has now kind of followed me there. And what's going to happen is now we're going to have the little ceremony, the little ritual where the fox is now going to be assumed by the spiritual essence. And now you're going to be able to completely control as the fox and just play the game through. And you can see the fox's eyes now got a real glint to them. Now the game is kind of open-ended in the way you go, but you do have set structure as well. So... Um, we're going to run to the east now. And I must say, controlling the fox is incredibly satisfying. I mean, this is really lightning, pe lightning fast pace, uh, very quick, very agile, exactly as, a, as it would feel to control a fox and glide through the fields and the forest. The game kind of does have a Sonic the Hedgehog kind of Tails-esque vibe to it as well. I mean, I'm not just saying that because it's a fox. I mean, you do kind of feel like you're gliding through the air and you're running through things very quickly and... It's just a very, you know, it feels great. And you can see, look, the blades of grass have been ripped apart there. You'll actually see this is going to be useful a bit later on. We'll show you why that is. But right now, in this current season, you can't do anything with that. So I'm just going to keep running. I'm going to kind of explain what the general gist of the game is about. So as you can see, the blades of grass fl flicking the back there. Lovely effect of the water crashing against the cliffs as well. All the lovely subtle changes in the background. That's what I love about this game. The game really has a lot going on. It's just you may not absorb it straight away when you're going past it. Now what you see in there, you've just seen that inhabit those plants. If you jump on them now, you can actually bounce between them a bit like Casino Zone in the Sonic the Hedgehog. Uh, and again, you've got that kind of ring there. If you look at there, that's very much like the loop the loop in Sonic the Hedgehog as well. So yeah, th there's influences and nuances, but they're very subtle and they don't kind of like beat you over the head and say hey this game is inspired by it's it's really genuinely just authentic in in that sense and it's very refreshing so again see the bounce there inhabited that so i can jump between the platforms now something i can do here i can use the interact beacon that i've already showed you and that vine then will extract and then i can jump between the next platform so i'm going to keep going now run 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 foxy run I move to the next stage and it's very uh, there's no sort of rpg there's no sort of leveling up or anything like that it's just basically moving around solving puzzles moving to the next stage developing the narrative but there's so much going on as well that i think you really will notice the the impact you notice as well when i ran past these things the totems they actually they, they sort of flare up as well so you can sort of see that the fox is having an impact and the essence having an impact on the rainforest as it goes along 
Now I'm jumping between tree branches, which is always fun. Maybe go up there. Again, you'll see why that's useful in just a moment. So you can see that I've got a spring season at the moment. So with the spring season, you can see that uh, it's only certain things can be activated. I've done that now, so I'll jump back up there. You can only interact with certain areas of the environment. I've just got to love playing as a fox. That's just so that's, that's that's great. You know, I really like that. Foxy. All right, we're going to go down here now. Now, this is where things start to get interesting. This is where the game starts to open up a little bit. You'll see what I mean shortly. It's more, it's, it starts to become a bit about the narrative direction. You start to understand what's happening with the game. And also the gameplay starts to evolve a little bit. And you start to understand, okay, this, there's more to this than meets the eye. Look at the 3D effect on the eyes there. That's just genuinely impressive. And that's that's no free that's that's actually just using paints effectively to kind of like create that depth. It's genuinely amazing, isn't it? And that fur is so well put together, it's just all by like paint strokes. Beautiful. And I think this is a real like play in this game. You've seen so many uh, negative, so much negative feedback about games over the years, and then you see a game like this. It says, actually, you know what? We can create a game where there's no combat. We can create a game where there's no sort of harming and the uh, and there's no sort of destruction. And it's just all about rebuilding, reconciling, reclaiming. And this is what this this game is exactly all about. And I think anyone could just play this and just, you know, be taken in by it. Right, okay, so. Now, we've talked about this. Now, watch what happens when I do this. I'm going to bark twice. And, hey, presto, look at that. So now you've actually changed it to a winter-infused environment. And, as you can see there, this plant has sprung to life. If I jump on this, watch what happens. <laughs> One snowball, thank you very much. Oh, laugh, eat your heart out. So now we can sprint around. And that's the other lovely thing about this as well, is that with backtracking, it never really feels like you actually are backtracking because the, the environment has changed so much that, you know, you're seeing the same sort of scenario, but it's different. And as you can see there, that vine that was previously extended uh, has now retracted. So what I need to do now, and this is, again, where the puzzle solving element comes in, so I change the environment back, that can that comes back to life. I can use that, jump, and jump back. And look at that seamless transition as well between seasons. I mean, that is just so wonderfully orchestrated and paced. And there's no sort of real lag there. There's just it's it's seamless, and you're still controlling the action as you're going along. So that's a really genuinely impressive thing in this game. do some sprinting again there you can see that sprung back to life so once that is activated there we go so jump back here and bounce boing and one puked up snowball coming up so there we can go back up there now and just keep running just keep running Yeah, I mean, look at that. That's just stupendous, isn't it? All 2D art, you know. It's a real... It really shows you how important 2D art is to this industry. Oh, 
and I think I'm not, I'm not really said much about the mechanics side of things and, and obviously the musical score, but generally the mechanics and the game feels very light and very agile and very easy just to pick up and jump into and play. It's it's and look at that colored lighting there. You see the colored lighting effect of that. That's again, just small little touches all around. But it's all building and developing a narrative. And look at that as well. That kind of shows you the journey influence a little bit there. So you now you've got the kind of the carving in the wood tree. That's very cool. So yeah, you've got the, this transition effect there. But yeah, it's it's this is um this really is a great platform. I mean, I, I my ro recent love platformer I've really enjoyed was the Rayman games. They're probably my recent favourites, and I wouldn't say this is quite on that level. Um, but this is certainly something that I've I've really sort of put the time into and I've loved and uh, I just couldn't put it down. I mean that when you have a game where you just cannot stop playing and you have to see it through to the end, I think that really is a testament to the quality of production and the quality of what you've, you're experiencing. So certainly for me, uh, that's a highlight for this game. I, I could not put it down. So there we go, I'm going to hit that. And again, you're going to see kind of the aspect of the puzzle solving now. So you're going to need to change the seasons again once you go up here. So we do a little bark. Rah. And then that's a plumped up flower. Flower bed. Ah, bugger. Okay, so now that's infused, so jump. Whee! Look at that. And now just gliding through. I think that's the great thing about the game, the pacing of it. You really kind of, um, you're sort of, as you're learning more about the world, it's kind of, you're feeling more and more attached to what's going on. You're more attached to the scenario, more attached to the mechanics. And they said the pacing is just enough that it kind of draws you in just, just fine. Um, yeah, Seasons After Fall is just a wonderful platformer, a wonderful experience in many ways. And I think we've been spoiled for that this year, certainly with the likes of Abzu and the re-release of Journey and, and now this and many other games as well, certain to come, Ori in the Blind Forest last year. This is just... Uh, fantastic piece of work and um I, I this honestly I, I i know people say recommend this to anyone i would genuinely recommend this to anyone even people who are against video games and say video games have got nothing to teach people and have got nothing to show other than violence and shooting and punching and kicking this is absolutely nothing like that this is something completely special something completely separate seasons after four lovely lovely game There you go. You can see now that winter season has taken over. It's the predominant season. But as you progress, of course, you get access to spring and autumn as well. So you can kind of use that and then that will have an impact on the environment in different ways as well. So, yeah, uh, this is just I think I pretty much said all I need to say. Um, you've seen all you probably need to see as well. This is what the game is. It's truly it's brilliant um i think the one thing i would have hoped for potentially is some co-op i suppose in the sense of perhaps having the all being able to be controlled by another player uh, but having said that it kind of detracts from the narrative as well doing that because you kind of the, the whole point is the orb is inheriting the, the fox so that the fox can then you know actually dictate what's going on and actually control the action so it wouldn't really have made much sense narratively to do that but i suppose that's just me being a bit sort of well if only but other than that there's nothing really to say other than just buy this game just just get involved buy it try it play it experience it it's something 
that comes along very rarely um, and should be appreciated and celebrated. Um, so yeah, Seasons After Fall out now. Thank you for watching. Make sure you drop a comment. Let us know what you think about this game. And, uh, and don't forget to like and subscribe. And we will see you next time.